Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to answer question number 8A from the February March 2020 um, International GCSE IGCSE Cambridge Paper 40580. So, this is Paper 4, Variant 2. Um, this question here is about this quadrilateral PQRS formed from two triangles. You have PQS, this triangle over here, and QRS, this triangle over there. Together they form this quadrilateral PQRS. We're asked to calculate first the length QR. QR, which is this length over here. Okay, I have a diagram already prepared down here, which I'm going to use to, uh, you know, refer to. So we need to find this length QR. I'm going to call this length X. This length is X. So to find this length QR, I'm going to be using this triangle over here, which is the triangle QRS, this triangle over here. Okay, I'm going to concentrate on this triangle here. So I'll concentrate on this triangle first. Now in this triangle over here, what we have is we have two angles and a side, and we have to find one of the other sides. And what we notice here is that these are opposites. This angle and this side are opposite each other. This side and this angle are opposite each other. When you have a case like this, we're going to be using what's called the sine rule. The sine rule is used when you have non y angle triangles. And we use the fact that um, when you have a, a, any triangle, that the length of a side divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side will give you a certain ratio, which will be the same for any three any of the three you know sets of angles and sides so the sine of uh, you can say six divided by the sine of 72 will give me the same ratio as x divided by the sine of 25 and the same ratio as whatever this length is divided by the sine of whatever that angle is they'll give us exactly the same ratio so using that you know um, relationship we can find missing lengths and sides uh, missing lengths and, and angles in these type of non right angle triangle um, questions. So we can't use, uh, you know, sine over uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. We can't use the trigonometry for for right angle triangles, so katoa. But we can use this relationship, which is called the sine rule, for non right angle triangles to find missing lengths and angles. So here, as we're trying to find an angle, I'll use the ratio with the uh, so as we're trying to find a side, sorry, I'll use the ratio with the side on the numerator. So I'll say x over the sine of the angle opposite x, which is 25, will give me the same answer as 6 over the sine of the angle opposite 6, which is 72. That's going to be a, a, a relationship that is true because of the sine rule. So x, therefore, will be 6 times the sine of 25 over the sine of 72. Just uh, multiplying both sides by sine 25, you end up with x equals 6 times sine 25 over sine uh, 72, and that will give us our answer. Okay, so we take the calculator, and we just simply make sure that we're in degree mode, which we are, and then we substitute, we just, um, you know, put this in. So we're going to find, um, we'll put a fraction, 6 sine 25 divided by the sine of 72. Two. Hold on. Be careful here. Sine of 25. Okay, 6 sine 25 over sine 72. Make sure we've, we've typed it in correctly and then press equals. That gives us 2.6662. Continues on further than that. 2, 2.6620. It goes on and on. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to round this because it's not an exact answer. And as the instructions in the beginning of the paper tell us, for non-exact answers, we should round to three significant figures, which is going to give us 2.67. Okay, this is a length. It's not an exact answer. So we round to three significant figures unless otherwise stated. It doesn't tell us anywhere in the question about rounding. So we round to 3SF. Okay, now we've got to find the length PS. Okay, the length PS is this length over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this other triangle which is pqs i'm going to focus on this triangle now pqs okay because the length we're trying to find is in the triangle pqs so i'll call this length y 
so it's different from the x there and in this triangle pqs what we have is we have two sides and we have the angle between those two sides okay now we can't use a sine rule in this case because we have one pair of opposites but we don't know any of the other two angles and we can't find what they are uh, from this information um, directly all right so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, you know the cosine rule the cosine rule is another rule which is basically based upon Pythagoras' theorem. We don't need to know its derivation, but uh, basically what it states is this is this is the formula, and I'll explain what the formula actually means and how it's applied. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine a. And this is a classic case of using the cosine rule. When you have two sides and the angle between those two sides, you can use the cosine rule okay, to find a missing length. So you know two sides, you want to find the third side, and you know the angle between the two sides that you're given, uh, you can then find, use a cosine rule. And in this formula, this is the length you're trying to find, and this is the angle that you are given. This formula, that's what we have here. That's the length you're trying to find, and that's the angle that you um, have been given. So these must be, they must be opposite. So the length you're trying to find must be opposite the angle given. So this in our formula is y, this must be the y, and this must be 34 degrees. That means b and c have to be 6 and 7.4. It doesn't matter which way I can call this b, I can call this b, it doesn't matter. They're, those two are the b and c. But the important thing is that must be my a, my side a, a, and that must be my angle a from the formula. So what I can say is y is equal to, now because it says squared, what I'm going to do to make life less complicated and to avoid a common mistake, I'll just put straight away the square root of b squared plus c squared. So it's going to be 6 squared plus 7.4 squared, or the other way around. It doesn't make any difference. Minus 2 times 6 times 7.4, 2 times bc, times the cosine of the angle 34 degrees. Okay, and that will give us our length y. So we take our calculator and we put this don't forget to put the square root a lot of people they forget to square root the answer at the end so i like to write it right in the beginning so you have six squared plus seven point four squared minus two times six times seven point four you can keep in the bracket that's fine it's, it gives you the same thing as multiplying times the cosine of 34 Okay, that's everything written down. Just make sure we haven't made a mistake there. 6 squared plus 7.4 squared minus 2 times 6 times 7.4 times the cosine of 34. That's correct. And that equals 4.1402. 4.1402 continues on. Again, this is a length. It's not an exact answer. Okay, we must round it to three significant figures, which gives us 4.14 centimeters. So there's the answer. To part two. Now, for part three, it's asking us to find the area of the quadrilateral PQRS, the area of this whole quadrilateral. Now, this quadrilateral is made up of two triangles. Let's call this triangle one and triangle two. So, if I find the area of each of these two triangles, I will have then um, and add them together, I can then find the area of the whole quadrilateral because it's made up of these two. So, if we consider triangle one, um, well, we know the area of a triangle is given by a formula half times base times height. And this formula can also be written in another form, which is a half A, B, sine C, where A sine C basically is the vertical height. So this basically, uh, you know, takes a non-right angle triangle, okay, and gives you the formula to find its area. A and B are two sides, and C is the angle between those two sides. So it's kind of similar to the cosine rule in terms of, to use this formula, you have to have two sides and the angle between them, but you're going to use sine, right? Half A, B, sine C, okay? Half times two sides times the sine of the angle between them. That will give us the area of that triangle. So in this case, for triangle one, we have all of that information ready for us. So we can say for triangle one, the area of triangle one is going to be given by half times six times 7.4 times the sine of the angle between them, which is 34 degrees. That's going to give us the area of triangle one. And for triangle two, 
the area of triangle 2 is going to be given by. Now, in this case, uh, we know x we found. Okay, We know this length, we know this length. These are the two lengths we know. x is the length that we found in the beginning, which is 2.6662. I'll write it in this more accurate form. 2.6662, before we rounded it. Okay, that is um, the length that we found here. Now, we know this length, we know this length. Now, I can't use these two lengths and these two angles, or any of these two angles. I have to use this angle between those two lengths. So I need to know what this angle is. Okay, the angle SQR. So to use this formula here, I need to use two sides and the angle between those two sides. I don't have this side. Okay, so the, the quickest thing for me to do would be to find this angle. Now, this angle here is going to be 180 take away the sum of these two angles, which is 25 plus 72. So 180, 180 minus 75 plus 22. Okay, was it 20? Uh, sorry, plus, sorry, I've got them the wrong way around. 72 plus 25. Okay, so 180 minus the sum of 72 plus 25 will give me the angle in this part here, which is 83 degrees. So this angle is going to be 83 degrees. So this angle is now 83 degrees. So I can say the area of triangle 2 is a half times, I've got 6 again from this is a side in this triangle as well, times 2.6662 times the sine of the angle 83 degrees. Now that will give me the area of this triangle over here. So let's go ahead and put these values in. So I'm going to have a half times the si times 6 times 7.4 um, times the sine of 34. That gives me 12.414. That's 12.414. goes on like that. I'm going to store this as a okay so that's now stored in my calculator I can use it um, to add to this angle and then I need to find what this is now what I can do here is I can go back to this calculation that I did to find 2.66 this one so I'm going to press equals so now I have this in my calculator times six times a half okay times so that that's basically this times this times that times the sine of 83. I'm just trying to keep exact values in my calculator to be more accurate. I press equals. That gives me 7.9389. 7.9389 continues on. So now what I can do is I can add to this our answer, which we stored as A. So I press shift and this button that go recall, recall A, which was at 12.414. So that's A. So I add that to my last answer, and that will give me my answer, 20.353. Okay, so that gives me 20.353 continues on. So that is the total, this is the total area, which I'm trying to find, which is rounded to 3SF again. That's 20.4 square centimeters. And that completes um, part A of question number 8. Part B is related to three-dimensional trigonometry. So it's still trigonometry, but I'm going to save it in a separate playlist, which um, is dealing with three-dimensional trigonometry. So this playlist, or this will be in two playlists. You'll find this question. Um, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist up here, which are basically related to the questions from this paper. So you'll find part B in this playlist as well. And you'll find another playlist that's going to be over here, which deals with the uh, trigonometry of uh, non-right angle triangles. So a sine and cosine rule and so on. You'll find that over here, a link to that one. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.